So yeah, I've been wanting to do this for a while, just because I like making videos. Yeah. Not just like video <laughs> blogs, and so this is kind of a new, kind of a new way to sh put something together. So what I want to do today is just kind of like go out with your truck, talk about your truck, right. film it and stuff. I guess like I don't know, you were gonna go out and show me that camp spot. So we can so head like, out there. Generally, we'll just head in that direction, I guess, All and right. then kind of along the way, I'll hop out and I'll get shots of your truck going over obstacles and stuff. So, let's talk about what is the official gear making model of this truck? Officially, this is a 1997 Lexus LX450, otherwise known as a Toyota Land Cruiser. But other than the name and everything, this is like exactly the same truck? This is. The only difference between this and the same year Land Cruiser is plastic cladding on the side. And if I'm not mistaken, this had a little more sound ending material to make it quieter. Otherwise, if you look around the car, look at any door jam, uh, stamp Toyota, yeah. it's, it's all the same. Same motor, same suspension, same axles. So you bought this thing with three different lockers on it? Yes. Right, and those kicks, it, that came from the factory like that? All FD80s will have a center diff lock. So normally you can only range. lock the center diff if you're in low range? Yes. With that switch, which this car was actually factory wired for, all I had to do was find the switch and plug it in. If you don't have the center diff locked, your vehicle is basically just all-wheel drive, which is not the same thing as four-wheel drive. Center diff is just evenly distributing power 50-50 to the front and back. Okay. Say you jump in a Subaru or an Audi all-wheel drive, those cars are usually about 70 to 80 percent front-wheel drive. And then okay. the differential locks in the front axle and rear axle will lock both front tires together or both rear tires together. So you could essentially activate all that stuff and all four wheels turn no matter what. Yep. Which seems to be a really rare option in any vehicle, honestly. <laughs> I've never even heard of that coming from a factory, but then again I'm not actually following trucks that much until recently. Yeah, I don't I don't know of many offhand that had factory front lockers, especially well, at least not in the US market. Yeah, and it's funny because oh. whoever ordered this originally obviously intended to take it off-road. Yeah. I feel this one was probably just a dealer option. Car. It was a car that was on the lot. So, um, what exactly has been done to this truck? You didn't do everything to it. No, I bought the um, car with a good portion of the lift already done. Uh, when I picked it up, it had Old Man Emu J springs, okay. uh, Old Man Emu L shocks, and Metal Tech coil spacers in the front, a two-inch coil spacer, and Metal Tech sway bar drop brackets. I have since added Metal Tech adjustable offset lower control arms in the rear, uh, okay. Metal Tech adjustable upper control arms in the rear, uh, TJM XJS pan hard bars in the front and rear, and I've replaced every single bushing left. <laughs> Rear sway bar is currently not on due to a broken bolt and my laziness to try and fix it. Yeah, you were complaining so, about that last time we were out. <laughs> makes a great off-road. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna ask you that. Like, without the sway bar, how much of a difference does it make? Because I know that it, because the sway bar connects both wheels, if you don't have it, it allows both wheels to travel more independently yeah, of yeah. each other. Most cars, the sway bar will make a drastic difference. This car in particular, I've noticed the rear sway bar, the difference actually isn't substantial. It's, I don't feel I'm getting that much more travel without it. The front sway bar on this, however, is very, very stiff and doesn't really allow the front to flex all that much in its current setup. So do you think it would benefit you to get like disconnect end links? Do you actually spend the time to take them off when you're about to go out? I would, and I'm actually going to. There's, there's one 
guy, one kit out there that I know of that makes disconnects for a fresh sway bar for this car. Uh, that's Lanker Products. I actually have the kit sitting in my garage. Again, just, just a matter of time. Wheels are a set of uh, Dixie Vec DC 2s, 17 by 9s. Tires are Maxxis Razor MTs, 35, 12, 50, 17. Yeah, it seems like it makes a difference. Just feel like I'm, I'm as I'm riding with you, I'm comparing this ride quality and this like just the way this truck is handling this terrain to mine, and it just feels like I don't know, it feels like this truck is just handling everything better. <laughs> No, it's like, it takes everything a lot easier than I feel like mine would. Like mine would, would be a lot more force yeah. when you t take those dips, but I think it's probably the tire diameter. Bigger tire, uh, a lot more volume there for sure. Yeah. Um, tired us down to 18 PSI today, so. What's a safe pressure to air down to without beat locks? It's a matter of your driving style. Don't I run into rocks. <laughs> <laughs> I've taken this truck as low as 15 on pretty hardcore trails. And it's just a matter of where you're driving to. You're just gonna wash. I notice most of the time I don't need to go that low. I'll be like 20, 22. This place is gorgeous. I love it out here. It's kind of a hidden gym, especially being so close to town. You get up on this ridge and the, just the breeze is really strong. Yeah. This will be a good spot to get some climbing stuff. Okay. Remember you were telling me this is kind of where like you can come over here and experiment. Yeah. Just your little front area. I need to spend more time off road in my truck just so I can build the confidence that I need. That's I think my main issue. Start small. But like on the motorcycle, I'm used to kind of being alone and I'm used to kind of being paranoid. And your best bet. Because if I go out and hammer it up rocks and shit, I can get hurt. Yeah. Let's do the middle one so I can get some nice uh, footage from the back end. I don't know what it looks like up there. I've never actually walked up there. I've just driven it. So I'll just drive up it. thing that I find the most alarming about like doing this is that you can't see where your wheels are. Because I'm, I'm so accustomed to just riding a motorcycle and being able to look at my front wheel and know where it's at. It's like it, going up that, it's like you can you put faith in your tire size. Well you kind of, you want to look at anything you're about to climb up and read it well before you touch tires to it. So when you see it, like you know, okay my tire's in this dip now, the next dip, yeah. the other tire's going in that one. The thing is, you put each obstacle next to a landmark that you can see. So I'll hang out a lot and look at where certain rocks are that I picked out at those going up and I know at this rock I know what's across. Oh. That's a good strategy. So basically just set it up in layers. So you can watch the one landmark. 
and you know that you're on your on your line. <laughs> yeah, I originally wanted a four wheel drive because I wanted to take people to the places I go to on my bike. And for some reason, I thought it was going to be like easier <laughs> than, than the motorcycle. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't say it's easier. You definitely can carry more stuff or whatever, but like it's just. I think in most cases it's actually a little more challenging. Just got one little rock climb. Hopefully I don't get stuck because the rocks are big enough that last time I did it I got high centered on my Well, head. don't do anything that, <laughs> that makes you uncomfortable because we've already got enough that no one's going to know what they're missing. There's some mud over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me jump out. Hopefully I don't get stuck, so I don't want to go walk and try to find someone. <laughs> you do get stuck. I want it on camera. All right. <laughs> well, that was easy. When I actually fell in my dip, we were going down it. After we camped at that one spot, I came back this way and we went down it. My tires came off the rock and my diff landed right on that one little shark fin. On that duck. big one? So my both my tires were off the ground. Oh man. Did it damage the diff? No. I think it's cast iron, man. <laughs> if I could take a beating. <laughs> Except so if we drag you back here, we can bring uh bring a little saw and start trimming back some of the trees just to so now you don't want to scratch your car. Shit. Understandable. So. Yeah, I'm cool with scratching it, but like, I don't know if I want to just drag it through some. Just really wear the paint out. Yeah. I'm kind of worried about resale value, but at the same time, it's like, when I'm done with it, it's going to be well over 300,000 miles. Yeah, you just got to figure out if you're. Are you going to sell it? Or are you going to just keep building it, building it, building it? The plan is just, it's kind of an experiment because I've never kept a vehicle so long that I've actually had to like rebuild things. So I just kind of want to keep it and, and repair it as things break or need to be replaced and see how that goes. Uh, buddy of mine, Scotty, his 80 series hit 320 or 360,000. No issues, but he just said, all right, that's, that's a lot of miles. Let's pull it and rebuild it. They pulled it, pulled the head off, dropped the crank, pulled the pistons out. He said there was still hash marks in the cylinder walls from the original pony. So like nothing. Yeah, rings and new bearings, considering it was a part. But literally, the majority of that motor went back together. Yeah, crazy that it's kind of all in your head. In some cases, like nobody, mo normal people would not think to keep driving something at 350,000 miles. Yeah. See, I I wouldn't buy one at that high mileage strictly because I don't know. It's a lot of years of maintenance. Yes. If and I don't know what happened. If I owned it the whole time, that's different. I'm hoping that people enjoy this. I'm sure they will. Yeah. And I'm, I'm trying to figure out a way to shoot some stuff that's different than what I normally do because, like, I'm not, I'm not bored of camping on motorcycles and stuff. But like, I don't want to just do that every week. Yeah. Because then if I do it every week, it's not really that fun for me anymore. So since I'm trying to get into this as a hobby, it's like, well, trying. There's a lot of stuff we could film. Mixing it into what you already have going on. Yeah. It's it's really. It's honorable to take a motorcycle and go on a long trip and camp and do all the dual sport shit, yeah. but it's exhausting. Yeah. Like if I was able to put it on the back of my truck and ride it out and drive out somewhere, get out of the truck and be refreshed on the motorcycle. Exactly. Like it's it's actually a much more fun experience. You could you could actually film a more technical trail ride or yeah. something like that as well. Exactly. So.